Have you ever wondered about the mysterious forces that give birth to the devastating power of hurricanes? Imagine the scene, a calm ocean, a serene sky, and then, out of nowhere, a swirling beast of wind and water. This is a hurricane, a force of nature that commands respect and instills fear. It's a phenomenon that has the power to reshape landscapes, alter ecosystems, and leave an indelible mark on human lives and infrastructure. Hurricanes are not capricious events, they are a testament to the incredible and often unseen power of nature. They are born from the simplest of elements, air, water, and heat, and yet they are capable of generating energy on a scale that is hard to comprehend. Now, consider this. Every single hurricane starts as a mere disturbance in the atmosphere, an area of low pressure over warm ocean waters. It's fascinating, isn't it? From such humble beginnings, these disturbances can grow into mammoth storms, spanning hundreds of miles and packing winds that can exceed 100 miles per hour. The impact of hurricanes extends beyond the immediate devastation they cause. They play a crucial role in our planet's climate system, helping to distribute heat from the tropics to the cooler regions. They are an integral part of the Earth's natural rhythm, a rhythm that we are only beginning to understand. But understanding these colossal storms is not just a matter of scientific curiosity, it's a necessity. With each passing year, hurricanes seem to be growing more intense and more frequent, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. The more we understand about these storms, the better we can prepare for them and the more lives we can save. Our journey into the world of hurricanes begins with a simple question. How do these powerful storms form? What triggers the transformation of a small atmospheric disturbance into a full-blown hurricane? To unravel the mystery of hurricanes, we first need to delve into the fundamentals of their formation. It all starts with something as simple as warm ocean water and a little bit of wind. Imagine a vast expanse of ocean bathed in sunlight. The sun's energy warms the surface of the water, causing it to evaporate and rise into the atmosphere. This moisture-laden air is the first ingredient in the recipe for a hurricane. It's the fuel, the lifeblood, that gives a hurricane its power. But warm, moist air alone isn't enough. You also need wind. Not just any wind, but a particular kind of wind, one that changes direction and speed with height known as wind shear. This wind shear helps to create a rotation, a spinning motion, that is the second key ingredient in the formation of a hurricane. So, we have a warm, moist air rising from the ocean surface and wind shear creating a rotation. But there's one more piece to this puzzle. The Coriolis effect, a phenomenon that causes moving air to turn to its right in the northern hemisphere and its left in the southern hemisphere. This effect is what gives the hurricane its signature spin. As the warm, moist air continues to rise, it cools and condenses, forming clouds. These clouds then organize themselves into a circular pattern around a central point, the eye of the storm. The eye is calm, a deceptive oasis of tranquility amidst the chaos. The process is akin to a dance, a delicate ballet of nature's forces. The warm ocean water provides the energy, the wind gives the rotation, and the Coriolis effect adds the final spin. It's an intricate choreography of elements, each playing its part in the birth of a hurricane. But this is just the beginning. The hurricane is still in its infancy, a tropical disturbance that has yet to reach its full potential. As the warm ocean water continues to fuel its growth and the winds continue to shape its form, the hurricane begins its journey across the ocean. As these conditions persist, they set the stage for the next phase in the life cycle of a hurricane. From a simple disturbance, a hurricane grows, fueled by heat and moisture. Imagine a toddler learning to walk. It starts with a shaky step, then another, growing stronger and more confident with each stride. A hurricane, in its essence, follows a similar path. It starts as a mere whisper of wind over the tropical oceans, but given the right conditions, it matures into an awe-inspiring force of nature. The key ingredients for this transformation, heat and moisture. Picture a pot of water on a stove. As heat is applied, the water begins to bubble, producing steam. Now, replace that pot with the warm tropical ocean and the stove with the sun's relentless energy. As the sun's rays heat the ocean's surface, water evaporates, rising into the air to form clouds. But it's not just any cloud that makes a hurricane. It's a special kind of cloud formation called a thunderstorm. As more and more of these thunderstorms cluster together, they create a tropical disturbance. This is the toddler's first shaky step. 
Now let's add a dash of rotation to the mix courtesy of the Earth's spin. This is known as the Coriolis effect. As the Earth spins on its axis, it causes the winds in the northern hemisphere to curve to the right and those in the southern hemisphere to curve to the left. This rotation gives the hurricane its distinctive swirling pattern, helping it to grow and organize itself further. With each passing moment, the hurricane strengthens, feasting on the warmth and moisture of the ocean. It's a self-sustaining cycle, a dance between the ocean and the atmosphere, a demonstration of nature's raw power. However, despite their destructive potential, hurricanes are not mere agents of chaos. They play a crucial role in regulating the Earth's temperature by moving heat from the equator towards the poles. While hurricanes can cause widespread destruction, they also serve a purpose in the grand scheme of the Earth's climate. When a hurricane makes landfall, it unleashes its fury in the form of heavy rain, strong winds, and surging seas. Imagine a storm so immense that it can cover entire states, with winds so powerful they can snap trees, destroy buildings, and hurl vehicles. That's the reality of hurricanes. These storms are not just single elements of destruction, but rather a combination of three main destructive forces, storm surge, torrential rain, and powerful winds. Storm surge is a rising of the sea as a result of wind and atmospheric pressure changes associated with a storm. It's like a wall of water that's pushed ashore by the hurricane, and it's often the deadliest part of the storm. This surge can reach heights of over 20 feet, flooding coastal communities, eroding beaches, and causing massive property damage. Next, we have the torrential rain. The intense rainfall associated with hurricanes often leads to severe flooding, especially in low-lying areas and river valleys. These floods can continue for days after the storm has passed, causing landslides, washing away roads, and inundating homes. And remember, it's not just the amount of rain that can be dangerous, but also the rate at which it falls. Finally, let's talk about the winds. Hurricane winds can exceed 150 miles per hour, strong enough to uproot trees, tear off roofs, and transform everyday objects into deadly projectiles. These winds not only cause direct damage, but they also contribute to the storm surge and flooding by pushing water towards the shore and driving rain into buildings. Each of these elements, the storm surge, the rain, and the wind, work together to amplify the destructive power of a hurricane. They're a potent reminder of the immense force of nature and the devastation it can wreak when unleashed. Understanding the destructive power of hurricanes is key to improving our preparedness and response strategies. Once a hurricane exhausts its energy, it begins to dissipate, leaving behind a trail of destruction. The mighty beast, now spent, slowly unravels, its once ferocious winds softening, its daunting rain clouds thinning, its formidable structure breaking down. This is the hurricane in decline, a spectacle that's as fascinating as its birth and growth. As the hurricane weakens, it starts losing its characteristic spiral shape. The eye of the storm, once a well-defined circle, becomes disorganized and gradually disappears. The winds no longer howl with the same intensity, and the rain gradually lessens. This weakening process can take anywhere from a few hours to a couple of days, depending on the size and strength of the hurricane. But what causes this dissipation? Primarily when a hurricane moves over land or colder water, it loses its source of warm, moist air, its lifeblood. Without this fuel, the hurricane cannot sustain itself. The process is akin to a fire losing its source of oxygen, slowly fading away until there's nothing left but embers. Despite its decline, the hurricane doesn't go quietly. It leaves in its wake a path of destruction. Homes are flattened, trees are uprooted, and entire communities are left devastated. The rain that once fed the hurricane now becomes a source of flooding, causing further damage long after the storm has passed. The aftermath of a hurricane is a grim sight, a stark reminder of the raw power of nature. Yet, out of this devastation emerges a testament to human resilience. Communities come together to rebuild and recover. Aid pours in from around the world and slowly but surely life begins to return to normal. It's a process that can take months, even years, but it's a journey that we embark on time and time again, demonstrating our unwavering spirit in the face of adversity. While hurricanes are a destructive force of nature, they are an integral part of our planet's complex weather system. 
Their aftermath, though heartbreaking, serves as a powerful reminder of our vulnerability and our strength. We've journeyed through the life cycle of a hurricane, understanding its birth, growth, destructive power, and eventual dissipation, and what a journey it's been. Let's take a moment to reflect on what we've learned. In our exploration, we've seen how hurricanes, these titans of the tropics, are born from seemingly benign weather conditions. Warm ocean waters and a little atmospheric instability are all it takes to set the stage for a tropical disturbance. This infancy is the first step in an incredible transformation that can lead to a hurricane's awe-inspiring maturity. As we continued our journey, we discovered how a hurricane grows and matures. It's a complex process driven by the continuous supply of warm, moist air. The hurricane, like a giant engine, harnesses this energy, growing in size and strength, often reaching its peak as it approaches land. The destructive power of a hurricane is something we've all seen, whether in person or through the lens of the media. We've delved into the science behind this destruction, understanding how strong winds, heavy rainfall, and storm surges can decimate landscapes and communities in the blink of an eye. Yet, even the mightiest hurricane eventually dissipates. We've explored the aftermath of these storms, understanding how they weaken and eventually die out. It's a humbling reminder of the transient nature of these meteorological phenomena. But why is it essential to understand all of this? The more we know about hurricanes, the better we can prepare for them. Knowledge is power, and in this case, it's the power to save lives and protect communities. By forecasting these storms accurately, we can give people the time they need to get to safety. By understanding their destructive potential, we can build infrastructure that can withstand their fury. By understanding the science behind hurricanes, we can appreciate the power of nature and work towards building a more resilient future. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing as it helps our channel grow and continue to create new and interesting content. We encourage you to express your thoughts on the video in the comments and share our content with others.